Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. So today I was going to go through some of the empties I have from March. Yes, this is March empties and it's mid-April, but here we go. I think I'm going to start with the candles I have just because I feel like that's the most interesting and then like work my way back, I guess. So I finished up five candles in the month of March, which I'm really happy about. I feel like I finished five because I was really utilizing my crock. Uh, wish I could say the same for April. April is not going as hot as March was, but let's get into it. So the first candle I finished was Bath and Body Works Red Velvet Cupcake. And like I said, I was really utilizing the crock. So kind of how I crock candles is I'll typically be like burning things and then when the crocks open I'll generally put like either my problem candle in there like if any of them are starting to get a little funky or sometimes if I'm like okay the crocks open I really want to use it I will just pop something in there that maybe is like the lowest like the most burned down if you will right now I'm not I haven't used my crock since the end of March. I really need to get on it. I haven't, I don't even have like a ton of candles I'm actively using. So I need to kind of like get on my March bandwagon here because yeah, this one I probably burned about halfway as you can see. And I don't feel like it was getting like sooty or anything. I think I was just like crocs open. I'm over it. Let's do it. But this was red velvet cupcake. It was really good. I really enjoyed the scent of it. It definitely like Look at that lid. It's seen better days for sure. This was from 2021. All of these might be from 2021. Uh, next we have Bath and Body Works. This is Give Peace Mahogany and Vanilla. This one I burned down like a fair ways as you can see. This one actually was doing okay. It was starting to get a little bit murky though. Feel like you can't tell anymore but it was starting to kind of get like where the wax gets a little gross and I was like should I keep going with it but you could really start to tell it was getting out of murky um but I was like nah once I finished the red velvet cupcake in the crock I was like okay I could keep going with this because I really did enjoy the scent of it but I was like probably not the smartest so we, we did pretty good on that one um, and then next up was the pink lavender es and espresso. Once again, I don't know if you can tell this one kind of, it, it did okay. Like probably it's about like right there. Um, but as you can probably see, it <laughs> was getting a little bit, um, it's that wax is murky. And this is after the crock <laughs> and it looks that murky. Before the crock, it was just like, it was not a pretty sight. So this one actually started to kind of change the fragrance a little bit. So I was like, no more, she's going to the crock. So this one got cut off for sure because it was starting to get a little gross. But yeah, I do like this scent. Don't know that I need to repurchase it. This one was actually from 2022. Um, the Mahogany Vanilla was also from 2021, so trying to like do my best to get through older things, but also give myself some variety, but um, Strawberry Pound Cake. This I do believe is from 2021. This is from actually Candle Day 2020. Is that true? I feel like I got this at a Candle Day, which would make it Candle Day. Well, no, 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 no. Sorry. Candle Day 2021 from 2021 it's probably candle day 2021 i feel like this was a candle day design um once again i feel like the lid on this one was kind of goopy a little weird um love this scent like honestly burned her down pretty far i feel like it got to the point where like I was like, okay, I have plenty of other strawberry pound cakes. I just need to move on. The crock's open. Let's get a move on. And so uh, put this one in the crock, but love strawberry pound cake. She's beautiful. I don't feel like this one, there was no soot on the edge of that one at all. And then I have one Homeworks, which actually is a, the three wick format. And it's in the scent Berry Trifle. This is from 2022. So this 
was a three wick. <laughs> I lost one of the wigs when I was in the croc. Um, this one also kind of started to get like a little bit funny. Like I felt like it was like, I don't really know about that. That feels like a little bit of buildup on the sides. Um, there's a Gemma hair in it. Fun. But this one, I feel like the scent was starting to turn a little bit. Um, it burned fairly well. Like it didn't tunnel or anything crazy. It didn't put off a ton of scent throw just because I feel like the wicks aren't very strong and these maybe aren't as scented as their four wicks. I don't know. Like I just don't feel like they have as much oomph. But it like the opening compared to a Bath Body Works candle, which also has three wicks, is fairly similar. Like, I just don't feel like they're fragranced as heavily. I could, that could be totally biased. But anyway, um, I felt like the scent started to go off on this one, kind of at this point where it's at right here. So then I popped it in the crock. I didn't have it in the crock for very long because the scent of it in the crock was not good it was actually not okay so it didn't live its life very long in the crock which is funny that it lost a wick considering it wasn't in the crock for very long I will say though one of these wicks was super not centered it was like the base of it was where these two wicks space were and then it was like just shoved over so when it would start to pull out you could tell that the wick was crooked and just had been like moved over so that they were evenly spaced it was really funky um i enjoyed it though i don't feel like i loved this scent as much as i feel people rave about this scent but like I said, I feel like, especially as I got towards the end, it started to kind of get a little bit questionable. And maybe that's why I didn't love it quite as much as other people do. So um, I think next I'm going to move on to body care. So finished up the, honestly, Corey finished this up. This is the Dove Holiday Treats uh, Limited Edition in Sugar Cookie. So Corey finished this up. He actually really liked this scent from the line. Honestly, I was super excited when this line came out because I was like, oh, there's doing something fun and different. But I feel like these scents were just a miss. Like, I love the Dove formula, but I feel like how they were scented was a miss. It just, I don't know. I feel like there's so many companies that have scented body products that, like, they should smell decent and not... Like, it was so artificial and, like, I don't know. You could have done so much better. And Dove has so much potential to do these types of things, in my opinion. Why don't they? Like, it's just kind of funny to me. So, that was kind of a miss, but Corey used it up. This is one of my favorite body lotions. This is the Naturium Bio Liquid Restoring Body Lotion. You can buy this at Target. Um, I absolutely love this i love that it has a pump um if we it's very dusty um if we like would travel somewhere via car when i was using this i was like taking this entire bottle with me i could not get enough of it this is probably the fastest i've ever gone through a lotion after buying it generally when i buy things I put them away like I'm that type of person. I don't like buy things generally and use them right away. It's just who I am. I don't know why, but it's kind of my thing. This one I bought and I was like, I have to test it out. I don't know why I had the urge, but I was like, okay, it has a pump. It's convenient, whatever. I tested it and I just flew through the thing. Like I used it so, so fast. I probably could have went through this within a couple months I know some people like use one of these a month. I probably could have used it in a couple months if it was like the only one I was using and I was using it every single day. At the end, I was trying to like mix it up because I was like, I really don't want to be out of this. Full transparency, I also completely forgot about this until I found it in this bin again because I've like totally moved on. I'm like, okay, I need to work on my other lotions, whatever. Because I was like, should I rebuy this? Like I was going to run back to Target and just re-get it. But I'm like, if I rebuy this, I'm never going to touch my other lotion just because I love it so much. It's kind of, to me, in the middle of a lotion and a body cream because it's in a lotion-esque format. Like, it comes out of a pump. It's, like, easy to kind of spread around, etc. But it's 
thick enough and moisturizing enough that it feels like a cream. Like it, it's not as heavy and goopy as a cream. And so that's why I feel like it's kind of in the middle. And that's why I just love the texture. I just love it so much. So I'm going to have to make sure this is on my Target favorites list just so I don't forget about her. But I have a lot of other lotion and body cream I need to go through. And that's why I haven't rebought it yet. So um speaking of kind of like body we're still in the body care section but like shower-esque moisturizer stuff i have this jergens natural glow wet skin moisturizer this is the fair to medium skin tones version so i do believe i heard about this product first from hyatt's vicky i'm pretty positive this is the so jergens does the whole like in the shower body moisturizer like before you dry off, you put it on while your skin is still wet and it's like lotion situation. That is this, but with gradual tanner in it. So, um, this is the light to me or the fair to medium. So it's not super intense. I'm pretty fair skinned. So like I wasn't going to do the medium to deep. I know, um, I'm pretty sure Vicky, that's the one she was recommending, but I would probably say she's not as fair complexion as me um but also I feel like everything in moderation like you could probably use it even if you're somewhat fair skinned but just not go quite as hard like maybe use it not as often or like that type of thing because I don't feel like this is the type of product that's like a self tanner you put on in like two hours it's developing and you shower it off like it it's definitely a gradual tanner um I will say though I could tell sometimes if I like got a little sloppy with the application like around my ankles I could kind of tell it was a little bit funky and that's why I'm definitely glad I got the um fair <laughs> and not the darker one but um I finished this up and I do I like the in shower moisturizing aspect of it but the current um, like self tan type product I'm using, I actually prefer more than this. I just feel like it gives more color and I don't know. I just, this one was fine and it was kind of like my be beginner like intro to <laughs> a little bit of like gradual tan, self tan, that type of thing. But I feel like the one I'm using now is just a little bit more. It's like it's I've graduated to the next level, if you will. Um, a hand soap is the Bath and Body Works White Tan Sage. Love this scent. If you're not new here, you probably already know. I love white tea and sage. Fresh tea, lemon, and herbs are the scent notes on the back here. It's just so fresh. Like it's not floral it I mean it's just like fresh <laughs> I love it um I guess I forgot about this speaking about self tan I've used this sample of this like completely bare it says it's a gradual tan but it also says hair inhibitor I just used this up because it was this sample I think I thought it was like a self tanner which I guess it is but it's also something that's like supposed to stop hair growth. I just literally used it like on my legs to use it up. Why? I don't know. Anyway, um, and then I have an empty perfume in Daisy Marc Jacobs. I feel like Daisy is just such a like classic, like it's not something I crave, but if I get a sample of it, I'll use it. So I try to go through these little minis relatively quickly and not let them pile up in my perfume collection so let's move on to hair care I only have two hair care items I have this shampoo this is the Pantene Pro-V Daily Moisture Renewal um I really liked this any shampoo that has a pump I'm into like honestly I don't I'm not that picky when it comes to shampoos um I'm picky about like my purple shampoo like I I like to have a purple shampoo I like to use like a more clarifying shampoo sometimes but my like regular every day which I don't shampoo every day but you know what I mean like my regular old shampoo 
I'm not fancy with it. Um, I also feel like sometimes when you go to get your hair done and they're like, oh, what shampoo do you use? And like, I'll be like Aussie or like this time, I guess I'd be like Pantene. I feel like when I say Aussie, they're like, oh, like, so not way. Like, you know, they're almost giving you this weird, like guilt from like, what it, it, does my hair look bad? Like, what? and they're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, I'm not buying $45 shampoo. When I have drugs or shit, like I don't think shampoo is what's making or breaking your hair or conditioner for that matter. Like hair treatments may be a different story. Shampoo and conditioner, I don't think that that's going to solve all your hair problems. I'm sorry if you feel differently. This was fine. <laughs> this is a moisturizing shampoo. And I got on fine with it. Like I don't feel like it made my hair more oily less oily, like eat any of those things. I probably wash my hair like every three to four ish days, sometimes five or more. <laughs> like I don't go a whole week like I used to, but I'm generally in the like four ish day hair washing and I still use a hydrating shampoo and it's fine. Like I'm currently using L'Oreal something it's purple it's in a purple bottle the shampoo is not purple but it's in a purple bottle um and then I also finished up this Batiste dry shampoo this was the volumizing version which I didn't like I liked the sprayer more than I liked like Batiste sprayers in the past but I didn't like the fact that this was volumizing um I don't buy Batiste dry shampoo anymore but I've had this for quite a while um and I actually have a different I remember buying these, which I feel like honestly, this is gonna sound crazy, but I feel like I probably bought these in like 2021 or something. Like it's been a minute. <laughs> I had these ones for a really long time and I bought them together. I had this one and then I have like just the completely bare Batiste. It's supposed to be like the no, I, it has no scent or something. Um, I have that one at work and I remember buying them because they were having some deal at like our grocery store. I was completely out and I was like, oh, I'm going to pick these up. Just getting through this one. So I now am on to using the Living Proof Dry Shampoo, which I like more, but I like the smell less, but I like the texture of it more. So yeah, this one, the volumizing, it was like, because it was giving you volume, it was like hard to get the cast out. It was just like a little bit too much. So, um, okay. Most of the rest of this is going to be skincare. And I just have one makeup item, kind of. Maybe a couple, I guess. So, let's talk skincare. Finished up these blemish patches. Which is this brand, which I think is Han... Han Hu, Han Hu, something like that. H-A-N-H-O-O. -O. Used this brand in the past. Um... I thought these were really nice and now I'm using the Zit Sticka blemish patches and those are actually really nice. I would probably buy those a hundred times over these. So this was like a nice cheap option but honestly in terms of like did they do things for my pimples? Hindsight of course is 2020. I thought they were great but now I feel like I have better ones that are actually really nice. So honestly, if you're like a picker, like you pick at your face when you have pimples, which I'm guilty of that. Like who is not guilty of that? Who just like can have the self-control to be like, I'm not gonna touch that pimple. Like, who are you? Identify yourself, please. Um, if you're like a picker, any kind of pimple patch is almost benefiting you because like you put it over and you can't get to it with your fingers. Like in a sense, even if it's not a high value pimple patch, like it's still helping you in that regard. I guess if you're not a picker, which once again, who are you? Um, <laughs> if you're not, then you probably don't need, like you probably want like an actually qu good quality one. Like you don't need it to not pick at it. Um, but these ones say they were, hydrocolloid that's that word medicated oh well like I believe what they're saying here non-medicated hydrocolloid is that it has that on the patch but I don't feel like it did the same quality as the ones I'm using now are so anyway 
Um, finished up this Kapari eye cream. It was just like a uh, little sample and it says it has niacinamide and caffeine. I didn't realize that. I got this um, as part of just like a little Kapari set that I got from like an Ulta or it was like a complimentary with purchase or something. Had very low expectations for all of the products in there. But this eye cream I actually really, really liked. I feel like it's kind of expensive, so don't know if I would buy a full size, but I actually really enjoyed it when I started using it. Um, I do, now that I'm like reading the ingredients on here, I'm currently using an eye cream with caffeine. I do feel like that helps with the puffiness generally, but niacinamide, I do think my skin actually really likes niacinamide. So maybe that's why I got on with this eye cream so well, not sure, but the texture of it was just really nice. It was like a lighter texture and very creamy. It wasn't like a thick, like, you know, one in a jar that's like really thick like that. So really enjoy that. I have two um, exfoliating type of products. So I have the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant, which is this like little sample really enjoyed this. I feel like if you can get samples of these, which I don't know why, but I feel like I had quite a few samples of these for a hot minute. Don't know if they were like Sephora point perks or how I kept getting all those, but they come with a decent amount of product. Like, and I, because I do skin cycling, I would only use this like twice a week. And so I feel like it lasted quite a bit of time. Um, I do like how the packaging has this like thing that you it like snaps closed so it just like doesn't spill. I do really like that. Um, I felt like this was very, very effective. I would 100% prefer this over any kind of like physical exfoliant. I haven't bought one of those in years, but like I do remember using those like intense scrubs on the face. It was probably really bad for me, but these I feel like are very effective in just like evening out, really doing the exfoliation and you just like put it on a cotton pad, rub it on your face. It's great. So once I was done with that, I was like, okay, now I need to move on. I have just like a ton of samples of things. So I opened up this Sunday Riley Good Jeans, which is a lactic acid treatment. And it says on here, deeply exfoliates the dull surface of the skin for clarity, radiance, and younger looking skin. I've used good jeans in the past. Like I had the full size, that's expensive, <laughs> good jeans. And I remember it, it was fine. Like I used it. It took me a long time to go through. Um, I remember the smell being horrible. Scent hasn't changed on this at all. But honestly, using this one, I didn't notice the results that I felt like I was getting when I was using this. So I don't know if it's just the difference in like, this is more creamy, this is more liquid, like how the products are actually delivered into the skin. I have no idea, but I mean this, I wouldn't consider this empty. This is just like a, I'm done with it product. I used it a fair amount. I mean, I didn't like go ham and put a ton of it on my face, but I don't feel like I did that in the past when I had the full size bottle either. So not sure. I just didn't like the results that this one gave me. So I just stopped using it. I was like, I have to have better <laughs> exfoliants in my like bin. I have all these samples, etc. So I don't know. I'm just like, did they change the formula of this? Is it less intense? Like, I'm not sure because it's been probably at least four years since I had used it. So things could have definitely changed. Like the formula could be different. Things could be a lot different. Um, have a mini of the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. I was using this like mini sample size bottle. It's one fluid ounce. So I guess it's actually not that many, but I was using this like more baby version as like my nighttime moisturizer for the whole entire time I was using this product until I was about empty with it. It occurred to me, and I don't know why it occurred to me that nowhere on this does it say like moisturizer. Like I was using it in the place of a nighttime moisturizer which in my head, I was like, oh, it's the ultra repair cream. Like I can use it as a moisturizer and which you, you can, and I was, but suddenly when I was getting to the bottom, it occurred to me, I was like, wait a minute, like, is this supposed to be a moisturizer? Because I have like the big, like eight ounce tub 
of ultra bear cream so i was looking it up you know i went on Sephora. i was like okay typing it in looking it up and then i was like oh my gosh i mean i've obviously been using as moisturizer it's been doing fine but this is like ultra repair cream like for dry cracked skin like whole body moisturizer if you want it to be like it can go anywhere i mean on here it just says help hydrate dry pat parched skin it it can go literally anywhere temporary temporarily help relieve minor irritation and itching due to eczema and other conditions like it's just for really dry skin and i wouldn't consider myself as somebody who has that dry skin i would consider my skin more normal to oily actually so once I got to the end, I was like, oh crap, like I actually really liked using this, but was I using it like almost wrong in a sense? So um, now that we're getting into a little bit warmer weather, I probably won't be using my more like full size version of this on my face currently, but I would definitely do that as we get into the winter again. I, my face actually really enjoyed this product, which is funny considering how like intense and thick it is, but I really actually got on with it very well. So, um, yeah, just putting that out there, I used the entire thing and then it dawned on me that I was like, I, in my head was just thinking this was only a facial moisturizer and it's just literally the ultra repair cream that you can use for anything. So I have used it in the past as more like a body moisturizer, the big tub, but in my head, because this was a small version, I was thinking it was only for the face. So they do have a dedicated face moisturizer and I think it actually costs more. So I would probably just recommend sticking with this and using it wherever you want. Um, I have this Innis Free sunscreen. This is the Daily UV Defense. It's the broad spectrum uh, SPF 36. This you can get at Sephora and it's like $16 for 1.69 fluid ounces. It's actually a pretty good deal for sunscreen. I, like I said, have more on the oily side of skin and I don't feel like this makes me greasy or anything like that. I've used this before in the past and this is actually a repurchase of it. I have some different sunscreens I'm kind of testing out right now, but this one I would easily recommend to anybody. I don't feel like if you're oily, it's too oily. And I don't know if you have dry skin, how sunscreens interact. If like they're more oily, does that affect your skin? I don't know. I don't have dry skin. Um, this I'm also just done with. So this is the DHC deep cleansing oil. I got this little mini, which is like a very nice size, but I, everybody, I hear a lot of people raving about this and I will say I don't know if this makes a difference but I I could see how I would maybe view it a little bit differently the full size has a pump I do love a pump like I do get that but the texture of this and like the quality of how it works I do not like and a lot of people really rave about it so this is just like a oil like a cleansing oil so you use it before you take off your makeup um it says dispense into dry hands massage onto face and dissolve makeup and other impurities rinse thoroughly so this would be like a first step cleanser for me it's it doesn't i mean it kind of looks pretty thick in here but i mean it's not like the thickest oil i've ever seen but it's definitely has a very thick texture for what i'm used to for cleansing oils and i just the residue it left behind it didn't do a good job of like actually taking off the makeup. I just feel like, where is the hype on this? I don't know. I did not get what I felt like everyone else was getting from this. So I like would use it for a little bit. I'd like put it aside. I'd use it for a little bit. I put it aside. I'm like, oh, I should just like finish it up. Like, you know, it's probably over half gone, whatever. And then I got recently the Neutrogena cleansing oil, which also has a pump and it's a thinner oil for sure. It's so nice. It's exactly what I was looking for. So I started using that one. I'm just like, okay, hey, like, is there a real, real difference between these two? Whatever. Started using that one. And then I realized how much I truly did not like this one. So I was like, you know what? no more i'm totally done with this so i just was like this one's going in the empties bin not technically an empty but like i said 
I'm done using it. <laughs> okay. And then let's quickly just chat about these few makeup things I have. I have in here, I do believe this is Real Technique sponge. And I put this in here because this is what I'm using now. This is the e.l.f. Angled Silicone Face Sponge. It says non-absorbent base. It does have a silicone base, but it's kind of like coated. And then the rest is like this texture. Not my favorite, not my least favorite. I'm not super picky about my sponges. And I feel like this one, I don't know why I stopped using it. If it was just like getting grody or maybe I was using it for a really long time. Not exactly sure. Um, and then last up, we have the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. Really like this. Um, I had used this in the past and I just wanted something a little bit more like stronghold kind of. And so I went back and repurchased this. Uh, instead of buying this again after now that I finished this bottle, I did buy the e.l.f. one instead, the like e.l.f. version of this. Um, haven't used that one yet. I feel like these sprays that are supposed to make your makeup stay on really long that have alcohol in them. I don't want to like, this one I did use every day. I do really like this spray. Um... But I was like, let me take a little bit of a break. I have a couple other sprays that I kind of wanted to use. So I'm using those and then I'll probably go to using the e.l.f. So finished up this though. Only kind of real makeup y product, I guess, besides that sponge. So that's everything. This was a long, intense video, but I did actually a really good job during March of just like kind of finishing up and clearing out some things. Like I said, April's not off to as good of a start, but we got a few more weeks left in the month. We'll see what's kind of in use, what I'm almost done with and what I can add to the pile. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.